All right, so Speedy, we're checking out another vendor uh, with a bunch of Express LRS parts. Um, this vendor is called Namimno, and uh, I think they released an earlier batch like uh, a while back, and they're slowly releasing batches out into the wild. Um, I finally have a set of uh, review samples here. I don't know if I have the complete set of everything or not. Uh, you may want to check the links. I I think there's a couple things I might be missing. I think mainly the linear antennas, they didn't send those. But um, they did send the two modules, so they obviously have both of the um, 900 uh, megahertz, 868 megahertz systems, and also the 2.4 gigahertz systems here on the right, as well as the various antennas. The modules only come in the full size JR Bay modules, they don't come in the nano size like the Beta FPV ones. Now, um, a couple things. Uh, I know that when I made release my video on the beta FPV parts, at the time uh, there was no Express LRS configurator um, released with the targets for um, the Happy Model and the beta FPV parts in there. So about a week after I released the video, um, uh, I think those targets did show up, and I was able to update all of the parts so that they were on the same firmware, and that was the reason why. Uh, the Happy Model stuff didn't connect with my beta FPV stuff because they were on different firmer versions. I think I tried to make that clear in the follow-up video where I did the I did a video on how to up update your hardware. That was uh, about two weeks ago. I'll link those videos as well down in the description. But anyway, the whole Express LRS ecosystem is a very fast-moving target. Things are constantly changing and being updated at a very fast pace. So. As I mentioned in the beta FP video, I was pretty sure that the information I had and my experience at that time was probably going to be out of date pretty quickly, and it turned out it was out of date in about a week. So uh, that's the kind of thing about making videos is uh, things that are rapidly changing. Your information will appear to be out of date pretty quickly, and it makes you look like you don't know what you're doing, but it's just because the ecosystem is changing very rapidly. But in any event, after I updated the firmware so they are all in the same version, basically with the released version 1.0 everything connected up and it worked everything it worked together no problem all the happy mile stuff worked with the BFP stuff and vice versa so if you're worried about interoperability between vendors there's uh, there's no no need for concern whatsoever on that uh, they will all work happily together um, and with each other so if you happen to have parts from one vendor and parts from another vendor they will work together as long as you update everything to the same firmware. And by the way, if you do update the firmware and everything, make sure you use the binding passphrase. You don't have to go through the whole binding process, which is a kind of a hassle with the uh, powering on and off your device or receiver three times. If you use a binding phrase, you don't have to bind anything. You just, you just turn on the receiver, turn on the transmitter, and they're just connected and everything just works. It's really great. That's one of the, one of the nice things I really like about the Express LR system is there's no more binding. Anyway, now that there's more vendors coming out here with more parts, there are some notable slight differences between the parts in terms of features um, that you may um, you know, want to pay attention to. So uh, they're not all the same. So uh, obviously the Beta FPV guys, they've gone for the smaller nano size modules. The Beta FPV does have an adapter if you happen to not have a nano sized uh, radio. Uh, they'll convert this nano size to a full size JR Bay module. Uh, that is, I was, I was a, a part that was released well after my video. It was pretty recent, so if you happen to want to have the Beta FPV parts, uh, but you have a radio that has a full size JR Bay, they do have that adapter for you. I think it was like ten bucks. Um, it might be cheaper if you just get the circuit board, and then you, uh, if you three D print your own part, I think it's like four dollars or five dollars. So not terribly expensive if you want to go that route. But if you have a full size JRB, then you know there's vendors like Happy Model and Namimno that have the full size JRB modules. So that's one notable difference. There's just, just differences in the antennas. So the Beta FPV comes with this Moxon antenna, for example, and also a linear antenna. I'm not sure why they come in both, but they do. And then the Mimno, they have their own antennas here. This is a 2.4 gigahertz one. I think they call this the Black Pearl. I mean, it's a nice looking antenna. The, you know, there's no additional coax connection here. And between, like there's on the on beta FPV one. So you know, notable differences there. I don't know if this is a, 
um, Moxon antenna or just a folded loop antenna. Uh, I didn't see any information on the product page on that, so if someone knows, let me know in the comments. And then, uh, the, of course, the 900 megahertz antenna is way bigger. It, apparently, this is tuned for both frequencies, and this does look like it might be a MOX on antenna, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. Again, for those of you experts out there, let me know. And, of course, they all come in SMA connectors. And, of course, you can, you know, mix and match the uh, antennas and stuff if you want. Obviously, you want to stay within the same uh, uh, frequency range, so the 900 megahertz stuff will work with the 900 megahertz stuff. And 2.4 gigahertz stuff work with 2.4 gigahertz stuff, and not obviously the other way. You can't have 2.4 gigahertz connecting with 900 megahertz. Obviously, it doesn't make any sense. Now the uh, receivers, um, I think the ones that are on the 900 megahertz side are red. They look like this, and they just look like a uh, Crossfire Nano. They don't. They're not as small as the Happy Model ones. They're about almost half the size of these, and they they do come with the built-in Wi-Fi antenna. Um, these have the UFL connector, and then the antennas are, I think, nicer looking. The, the, these, these parts are, these, these are nicer looking than the Beta FPV ones. They come with different connectors, and this one's a longer. Now, Beta FPV has a wider variety of antennas. They have shorter ones. If you want the reduced limited range 900 megahertz antenna, you can get that. If you have a smaller build, for example, they have the full size antennas. They have different antennas with different lengths. Uh, shorter ones and longer ones, if you want, you know, different types of antennas for different builds. This is the only one that comes with the uh, 900 megahertz receiver, just you have one antenna, this is it. One choice only. Uh, you do get the, um, in the bag, you also get the heat shrink and, of course, four wires to connect to your UART. Nothing uh, unusual there. Um, they did send me two of these 900 megahertz ones. Um, yeah, I'll probably ha I'll probably do a giveaway at some point in the future. You know, just look for the links in my videos. You have to watch the videos for the links. I don't announce them. Um, this is what the 2.4 gigahertz one looks like. Very similar, but it's blue, and it's got the Wi-Fi antenna there for the updates. Of course, you know you can update it via um, BF Flight Pass Through as well. That's the my my recommendation. That's the easiest and most reliable way. I, I find Wi-Fi update kind of works sometimes and kind of doesn't. This is the 2.4 gigahertz antenna. Obviously shorter. Again, they have this nicer connector here. It's, I think it's a little bit more durable. But then this is only one type. This is one long length here for the micro FL connectors. So Beta FPV has more variety, but I think this one looks a little bit more durable. And again, you get the same heat shrink and uh, four wires to connect your UART. And then they um, also have the uh, the SMD antenna, the, the surface mounted uh, antenna, or the ceramic antenna. This is basically the one it's right onto the board like that. Makes it very nice and small. This is, um, I think Happy Model is the only other one that does it like this. I'm, I'm pretty sure the other vendors, and by the way, um, I don't think it, I don't think it's a secret, but iFlight's coming out with their Express LR parts. I don't have those yet. Those are on the way. And HGLRC is also <laughs> coming out with Express LRS parts. Um, yeah, and there's rumors that there's gonna be uh, an Express LRS radio coming out soon too, so. Yeah, there's all kinds of wild rumors out there. I, yeah, well, if you guys know of any of that, let me know down in the comments below. There's some pretty interesting ones out there. But yeah, if, if uh, that radio with Express LRS built in comes out, yeah, definitely I'm going to be getting that uh, as soon as possible. So if don't, don't, no worries, I'll have a, review, a video on that one because I'm super interested in that one. But this is what the uh, one with the SMD antenna looks like. Not as small as the Happy Model ones. Now, um, all of the... Um, Express LRS receivers that have the ESP chip on them, which basically supports the Wi-Fi um, radio that's on here for updating. They all have an issue with certain flight controllers. Um, I think it's like certain GEPRC ones with an on-one flight controller. If you use, if you connect these up to UART1, um, there's something, some sort of a fault in the design, I think in the flight controller. Um, where the, the basically the receiver will go into Wi-Fi update mode like immediately and won't pot, won't try and connect to your transmitter. Uh, if you had that problem, that means you just have to move it over to a different UART. So you have to probably do some UART swapping. Uh, I think it has something to do with the SBUS inversion or something like that on that particular UART on those flight controllers. If you're having that problem, just switch from that particular UART to another one. If, you, if there's another device that's like, like a Vista that's on that UART, switch it over to the other one. You just swap them, and I, I've heard that that fixes that problem. So another difference in uh, the hardware between vendors is that 
the uh, telemetry, I guess, uh, power that's coming back from the receiver to the transmitter has uh, different levels for different vendors. I know that on the beta FPV receivers, they have a power amplifier and a low noise amplifier, PALNA, that I think it, uh, for telemetry power back to the transmitter, it's 100 milliwatts. I think that's the one with the highest power. The one on here from the, Mim the MIMNO is 50 milliwatts. Now, um, regarding the transmitter power, so the 2.4 gigahertz one here, this is, I believe, up to 500 milliwatts. Now, on my particular setup with my jumper here, I, I'll show you here in a second. I, I'm only getting up to 250 milliwatts. When I switch it to 500 milliwatts, it switches back. So I'll show you that here in a second. The fan on here only turns on if you go above, uh, um, well, if you go above 100 milliwatts. So at 100 milliwatts, the fan is off. At 250 milliwatts, it turns on. I haven't tested the 900 milliwatt uh, or 900 megahertz one yet, but this one supposedly goes up to one watt, and I'm pretty sure at 250, 500, and one watt, it will uh, turn the fan on for cooling, active cooling, and of course you can power it up um, via the XD30 for extra power for longer, basically longevity, so it'll kill you, your internal battery in your radio. Also regarding uh, the updating list, you can update the transmitter modules via ST-Link, which is, uh, eh, you know, um, probably most of you guys don't want to do that. That's, that's one of the harder methods. The other way is via Wi-Fi. Uh, obviously, you have to put the transmitter into the radio and then you enable uh, Wi-Fi via the Express LRS script, the Lua script. Let me go ahead and turn this on and show you. Welcome to OpenTX. Go into here, go into the Express LRS Lua script, and go down here, Wi Fi update. It'll create a Wi Fi radio, and then you'll have to connect it to this this particular one. Um, obviously, the other vendors are their methods are a little bit different. With this one here, I had to connect up to my like home Wi Fi, and then once you do that, basically it'll show up as a device on your home Wi Fi. And from there, once you do the um, build and flash in the Express LRS configurator, it will find uh, this as on your network, basically your home network from your laptop computer or whatever computer you're using it from. Um, so it was a little bit uh, confusing at first because I thought maybe you had to connect directly to the Wi-Fi radio in here, but this actually connects to your home Wi-Fi. That way, if you have like a desktop computer, you can, you can flash it uh, from your desktop computer and it'll find it on the network because it'll then make the Wi-Fi radio, it's in the transmitter here, connect to your home Wi-Fi and it'll show up as a device on your home Wi-Fi and then your computer will be able to find it when you hit build and flash and then it'll flash the uh, radio um, or the, the uh, firmware into the transmitter module. Now let me just show you here what I was experiencing here. This is by the way version 1.0 of the, the, the formal released uh, firmware and I have tested this with uh, a beta FPV this one here's the HX115LR it works with this one no problem just so you guys know that I just to prove that it does work with other vendors and no problem there uh, but when I try and switch this power so 250 no problem and then the fan turns on I can hear the fan but then I go to 500 it goes back to 250 so, not sure what that's all about. Um, I'm sure there's something that I uh, didn't per perhaps select as an option in my um, uh, Express LRS configurator build. So you have to like select some options, then do the build. And pretty sure that I picked everything correctly. But yeah, if you guys know why it's doing this, because it should do 500 milliwatts according to the specs. It doesn't do one watt, but it will do five. It should do 500 milliwatts. So uh, maybe. I don't have the latest version of OpenTX on here. I think I'm on 2.3.12 on this particular radio. So if you guys know, let me know, know Let me know down in the comments. I'm interested in finding out. Okay, that's going to do it for this one. You know, again, this is a fast-moving target. Things are developing rapidly. And yeah, leave me your comments and questions down in the comment section below. You know, I'm uh, going to have more of these parts coming out from other vendors pretty soon. And, and so far, I haven't had any problems with... Um, at least the parts that I've been been playing around with and using no fail safes, uh, very good control links, and for, so far pretty happy. And um, I, I'm I'm already you know gonna, I think I'm going to start migrating away from Crossfire because everything's working so well. So I have a full size Crossfire, the one that goes to two watts, full size Crossfire module, and a micro V1 module that I'm going to be selling off. So if any of you guys are interested in picking 
one of those up for a good price, email me and uh, maybe we can wheel and deal for one of those. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. Talk to you guys in the next one.